Great experience. Uh, we have great senior leadership and in practice we know we need to get to work and intensity is always key. So right now it's early but we're keeping our head high and we have a lot of confidence going into the season. Uh, you guys played uh, two very different games already. One where it was a close win and the other one was a loss. What did you learn about your team in those two weeks? Uh, first week it was super wet. Uh, walking onto the field there's big puddles and we rose to the challenge. We know what we had to do and make tackles and that was key for the first game. Second game we kind of Missed a lot of tackles, but we have nothing to hang our heads well for. And right now, we're going into the season with a lot of confidence. Obviously, folks that they're 2-0, they wanted a dramatic crash. The SEC feels kind of wide open. How big of a game is it on Friday night? It's a big game. Uh, we win this one, and we're in the driver's seat. So we're excited. We know that today, this whole week, we need to be intense. We need to get to it and get to work. And Friday will be a fight. It will be a dog fight. They certainly know how to score some points, and they got some wide receivers. What does that excite you to, to be on a defensive backfield that, that we're gonna have to slow these guys down? Does that excite you? It, it for sure excites me. You know, like going last week against uh, Craig Young, he's going to Ohio State, but we're just like, okay, we'll, we'll take that challenge, and it's fun playing against higher people because that's the only way you get better. You know. Uh, in class, uh, Spanish 4, our teacher was talking about, hey, you guys should think about going to Japan, nights in Japan. And I was like thinking about it, like, man, that would be crazy. I've never thought about going to a foreign country like that, 11 hour plane ride. But I was talking with my friend Paul Braun, and I was like, yeah, maybe we should try that. And it was a great experience, you know, uh, totally diving into a different culture. And it's kind of like our football season, how you challenges arise, and you need to pick up the intensity every time and you know it's a great experience. What's the biggest difference between Japan and Fort Wayne, Indiana? Biggest difference? Uh, Japan you have to use chopsticks, Fort Wayne you use forks and spoons. <laughs> was that difficult for you? You know it was kind of difficult because it's it's like the other part of your brain making you work and uh, I've never actually had to use chopsticks before but every day in and out and I rose to the challenge. Expert in chopsticks now. Pretty much. Do you have to ever teach your friends here at Bishop Lewis how to use chopsticks now that you're back? Uh, not really, because around here, like the only restaurants with uh, chopsticks are like Takaoka. But when we go there, I definitely know what's going on. Know what everybody know. Uh, how did that kind of change your perspective on it? Because uh, they go to school year round. They get out. At, I mean, it's a different culture. How did that change your perspective coming back? Uh, coming back, I know that today everybody's saying it's hot, and it's definitely not hot. In Japan, it's 105 humidity every day. feels like 110, and it's just crazy. But uh, going in there, you're sweating through classes. You don't have AC. It kind of like makes you think, like, don't take this stuff for granted. And they don't play football, but they work, like, all day. Before school, they have practice. After school, they have practice, different clubs. So they get to work, and I kind of took that back here, and it makes me want to get to work. Explain to them football? Yeah, they don't have football. They call it American football because when you say football, they think of soccer. Yeah. So I had to explain to them a little bit about how football works and everything. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add about Japan or the game or anything? Uh, the game, uh, we may have lost, but right now it's so early in the season, we're ready to come back firing. So everybody in the city better be ready. Uh, the team doesn't give up, you know. Um, we had a poor tackling game and, uh, you know, we kept our heads up and uh, kept playing for a quarter. So I learned that we don't give up. Uh, as a linebacker here on the defense, focal point of the defense, how do you get better? How do you learn from that, that game? I mean, you know, all starts of practice. Um, you know, this week we're focusing more on tackling this week. Um, you know, Carroll, I'm at Homestead. They have a good run game, you know, RPO. So um, as long as we tackle, you know, we'll be good. How excited are you for the Homestead game? They're undefeated in the conference. The SAC kind of feels wide open. How excited are you to get back at it? I'm, ex I'm excited. You know, um, last year it wasn't a good game for us. And, uh, we want to prove to everyone that we could compete with anyone in this conference. And, you know, we just have to stay humble. Obviously, physicality is a big point, especially when you're playing Homestead. How, how physical do you have to be against these Spartans? You know, you just have to be 100%. Um, you know, just like I said, we just have to practice tackling this week, and then it's going to come on the field, and um, we're going to tackle real good. So. so obviously Josh missed a little bit because he went to Japan. Uh, what has he told the team about that experience? 
Um, he told us it was hot there. So uh, when he came back this summer, you know, it was easy for him to practice and uh, taught us a couple words. Learned quite a few things. Um, a, that we do have some solid leadership on this team. I think that was a big question mark heading into the season. Um, our kids are willing to, to battle through adversity. Uh, I think we showed that week one being down um, on multiple occasions to Carroll. Uh, I think we showed it last week, being down 14, giving ourselves a chance uh, in the fourth quarter. You know, we get a defensive stop, um, you know, under seven minutes, we get the ball back, game's in our hands. Uh, also learned that we need to be a more, more physical football team. We got to finish uh, blocks, we got to finish tackles, uh, the very basics uh, of football. Um, you know, we got to get better at the fundamentals, and that's what we're out here doing this week. Hopefully, it shows Friday. Uh, do you think the leaders stepping up, how much, how much will that kind of factor in the rest of the season, knowing that the leaders are there right now? That's going to be, uh, to me, that's going to be the key to how far this team can go. Um, we talked about it both pre-games um, and all off-season. Uh, we're going to be, this team's going to be defined, and our success is going to be defined in how well we handle adversity, and, um, you know, that starts with leadership. And... So far, we've seen some leaders step up uh, in our senior class. We've seen some kids step up in our, our younger classes, which is uh, good science uh, for the, the season. But uh, here we are sitting one and one um, getting back to the basics of fundamentals this week. And you know, hopefully, in the long scheme of things, that uh, our leadership uh, will, will prove to be a pivotal point of the season. Uh, defensively, obviously, Homestead. They got some wide receivers. They got Absolutely. explosive offense. How do you plan on maybe slowing that, mitigating their explosive plays? Um, you know, the best the the best asset a defense has is an offense that can control the ball. Uh, so we need to eliminate turnovers. Um, you know, we've had uh, four turnovers through through our two games. So we need to eliminate turnovers. Um, continue to move the ball on offense. Pick up first downs. Got to get a run game going. Um, a stronger run game, which uh, we expect to have. Uh, but we got to get better up front to do that. Um, and then, you know, on the defense side, we got to tackle. Um, you know, we, it was probably uh, the worst tackling performance I've seen um, as a coach, as a player, uh, even growing up as a kid, from what I remember. Um, you know, it just was not a, a good performance uh, in the tackling department. We had a lot of opportunities to tackle Wayne's backs at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, we failed time and time again, and uh, that's a lot of credit to uh, the power those kids have. Um, it's also a, a lack of uh, sticking to the, the fundamentals of tackling, which we've been working on all summer um, with and without pads. So, um, you know, ultimately we just got to tackle. Uh, I was going to ask you, because obviously we're doing the story on Josh. Uh, first question's got to be, uh, what kind of player is Josh? I mean, what kind of, what kind of kid, what kind of player is he? Uh, he's the type of kid that every coach dreams of having in this program. Um, we've all, everybody's got those those kids that they do all the right things in the classroom, off the field, um, on the practice field, in the weight room, conditioning. Um, you name it, he's going to do it for his coaches. He's going to do it for his teammates, for his team. Um, so that sticks out. You know, he's a bright as bright as they come. Uh, really smart, smart family, great family. Um, he's a kid that truly cares about others, cares about. Um, Kids about winning football too. I know that. Um, he's a, a as a football player. He's a tough kid. Um, he's a, a pretty, pretty solid um, tackler. Uh, he's solid in just about every aspect of his game. Uh, you know that stems back all the way um, throughout his CYO days to his freshman year. Um, he saw some pretty significant time as a sophomore. Um, and you know it's not easy to play football in this city as a sophomore. So that speaks to the volumes of him as a player and his potential as a player. Um, Last year, he uh, well, he was hurt a little bit by the injury bug uh, early in the year, and that kind of affected overall his uh, his playing time um, come tournament time. But uh, you know, from what we've seen through two weeks, we, he's been the player we, we thought, and that's a, a kid that is going to stick to his assignment. Uh, he's going to communicate across the board. Uh, he understands the schematics. He understands uh, what he's his keys, what he's looking for from an offense, um, and he's been one of our um, usual sure tacklers uh, you know he's one he's one two that's gonna have to have to get a little bit better we're all gonna have to get better but uh, you know he's a heck of a kid and a pretty good football player uh, obviously which is Japan he probably missed some part of football conditioning or anything in the summer but obviously the benefits there oh, yeah. what kind of benefits did you see from, from something like that I mean anytime a kid has a uh, an opportunity to have a an experience like that um, you want them to have it. Uh, you know, that's uh, kind of our mantra here is uh, 
around the building is to really cultivate these kids to uh, enjoy the experiences beyond just the, the football field or um, the stage or the basketball court. Um, we want kids that are well-rounded um, individuals that will be contributing members of society. So when a kid says, hey coach, I'm gonna go to this, this trip and I'm gonna miss a month of football, my, our first reaction as a staff was go for it. It's a, an experience you may not ever have again, so enjoy it. Um, and you know, in, in the future, uh, we'll, we'll continue to support kids that want to do that. Sure. Uh, obviously, you went as he's, you talked about him as a, as a person. Did he change? Is he a little bit different now than he when he left? I don't. I haven't seen it. Uh, maybe perhaps he he could probably comment on that himself. But uh, he's been the hard worker, the yes coach, yes. Uh, Yes, ma'am, type of kid that uh, we knew when he left, and that's the kid that we've seen since he's been back. Um, he did uh, talk about how great the experience was and um, learning and learning about and uh, being kind of ingratiated into a new culture. Uh, it's so cool for him. Uh, I know he's very appreciative of uh, the opportunity to do that. He's appreciative of the support he's got from the staff. So uh, ultimately, I don't, I don't think he's any different a kid. Um, but again, that, maybe his parents could better answer that for you.